are the Cowboys making the right choice by sticking with Cooper Rush? Skip, it's really hard to say they're making the mistake right now, but here's what we know. Dak Prescott hadn't played, hadn't played football in 11 months. He played none of the preseason, and for the better part of the preseason, Skip, he had an injury that, was, that didn't allow him to throw the football. So you're rolling the dice saying, we believe, although Cam hasn't played in 11 months, we know he's going into the season with a little injury. We believe that he's going to be healthy throughout the remaining of the season. Therefore, we won't need Cam, we won't need Cooper Rush or Cam. That's a big risk. That's a big ask when you have playoff championship aspirations and you're going to pin that because you're only as good as your backup. Because if something happens to your starter, you're going to ask that backup to come in for a week or maybe longer, mm -hmm. and he needs to stem the tide. He needs to hold it in the road and make sure nothing, make sure you don't drive in the ditch. And so they believe Cooper Rush. Now, I don't know where all this newfound belief and faith in Cooper Rush have come from because this is the same guy that they cut last year after they signed him to a two-year deal, get Andy Dalton off the strap heat, and yep. they gave Andy Dalton, what, $7 million. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe in Cooper Rush then, mm -hmm. but they believe in Cooper Rush now. Mm -hmm. The thing that they have going for them, Skip, is that there is no need, there is no rush to sign Cam because why? Cam didn't sign until late June last year. It didn't seem like a whole lot of teams were beating down Cam's door to get him in into their building. So True. Dallas is saying, you know what? There's a chance that, hey, come late September, October, if need be, we can go get Cam then. So, Skip, for me to say right now it's a mistake, it's hard for me to say that. They believe in Cooper Rush for whatever reason. I don't know if you – because now, Skip, with the new rules, you can put a player that's 35, 36 years old on the practice squad, let him learn your system, mm -hmm. and then if the situation arises, you can put him in the game. Mm. I don't know if you can do that with a guy of Cam's background, a former MVP, a rookie of the year, a guy that's been to multiple Pro Bowls. I don't know if you can do that with him. But right now, they believe in Cooper Rush. Mm. And I don't really know how many different ways they can tell you, Skip. They're not really interested in Cam. Mm. Jerry kind of made that abundantly clear the other he day. Did. And then here come Mike McCarthy following it up. So I don't really know what else they need to say. It seems to me. If they do go in a direction of a court backup, court, uh, uh, picking a quarterback up off the street, I don't necessarily, I don't believe it's going to be Cam Newton. Okay, my turn, and I'm about to unleash on this <laughs> you leash on because your big picture, they are the team obviously being featured in Hard Knocks. Correct. We have one last episode. Episode five will air this Tuesday night, HBO. Yep. But it's starting to feel like. As much as I'm trying to love my team, as, as much as I like my team right. to win the NFC least, if you will, <laughs> that my team is getting fuller and fuller of itself because it's on hard knocks. <laughs> I told you I thought it might be a good launching pad into yeah. the season. But all of a sudden, my team is acting like it's the defending champs of the National Football League. They act like the Bucks, huh? They, they are. They, they're, <laughs> they're conducting themselves with Bucks like arrogance. They like are. if you didn't know the difference, mm -hmm. if, if you just, if, if, if you were just dropped in from Mars and you heard these remarks yeah. from Mike McCarthy yesterday, you'd say, this team is riding high, man. This team is on Radio top playoffs. of the mountain. This team has showed the NFL what's what. <laughs> you know, this team is in charge of this league right now because this team is saying, we are good. We are excited about what we have in-house. Right. We, we, we don't need Cam Newton. Right. Come on. Seriously? Cam Newton had a hard time last year in New England. Right. So wh we're the Dallas freaking Cowboys. Right. We are America's team. We are the stars of hard knocks. That's how it's coming across to me, mm -hmm. and it horrifies me because, obviously, they have proven under Mike McCarthy zero, Nothing. big zero. Correct. And I'm starting to wonder about his motivational skills, number one, but more important, number two, was he just a product of your man Aaron Rodgers? Seriously, was he only a product of Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Obviously, he has no motivational gift at all. That That is not his forte. Correct. And the more he tries on hard knocks to show us his personality, there is no personality. Right. He, uh, Jerry and Steven and Jerry Jr. love him because he's become kind of one of the boys part of the family. And that's how they hired him that night. It went all the way to 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> over beer and nachos at Jerry's mansion until finally Jerry Jr. looked across the table at Jerry Sr. and said, what are we waiting for? Yeah. 
they're interviewing him, obviously. And it's like, let's just do it right, right. now. And, and according to reports, they did. They, they inked it up right there. They went ahead and signed Mike McCarthy. Right. And they seem very happy with Mike McCarthy because he will do whatever he is told to do. Correct. So all of the above is coming from upstairs. It's coming from Jerry and Stephen and maybe Jerry Jr., mm -hmm that they don't want Cam Newton. They're happy with what they have right. in-house. So I'm reading these comments from Mike McCarthy, and, and they're offensive to me because, look, I, I can't defend what Cam didn't do in New England last right. year, but, but I'm still a fan of his because right. for all the showmanship and all the social media and all that, I, I, I got it. Right. If you cut through all the, the exterior to what's inside, I'm talking about a baller here. Right. I'm talking about a man who won the MVP the hard way mm -hmm. because he did it with his legs as well as his arm. Right. He did it with his body as well as the Brady S just using your, your mind and arm right. to, to beat mm -hmm. oppositions. He, he did it with, with legs and power football where, where he literally would take games over with physicality at the quarterback position in ways – I don't think we've ever seen in this league. Help right. me out. No, Have you ever you, seen anything like it? No, no, but Skip, you said cutting through. But can you cut through that? Can you just look at Cam Newton and say he's a football player and not this big outstanding personality well, well, that's going to that. take over he's, your locker he's room? He's born that way. Right. And he's going to be that. I thought that would be intriguing to Jerry, who loves marquee value. He, he does. He loves he box loves office. Names. Yeah, and, and Cam is a huge name mm -hmm. with a huge following. Mm -hmm. And I think my quarterback, Dak Prescott, has proven enough and certainly been rewarded with enough of $75 million Correct. that I don't think he would be under any threat from Cam Newton. But neither do I. And I also think that Cam, just being in the quarterback room and on the practice field, would actually help spark Dak a little bit because Dak is coming across to me in hard knocks like, he is now the king of the like kingdom. Like he'll man. He's, he's like, like he's, like he's operating like yeah, he's got like a couple. He's my boy. Like, like he's got a couple of rings. Yes. Doesn't he act like yeah. that? And it scares me. Yes. He got his money, but he ain't got no rings. He, he's got nothing to show. Nothing. And I'm going to have to say my least favorite stat in all of sports again, 6-11 and 11 in his last 17 mm -hmm. starts is Dak Prescott. And when he was betting on himself down the stretch of the 2019 season, locked nose to nose with Jerry Jones in an impasse of a negotiation, <laughs> what happened? He failed. Right. At Jets, do I have to say him again? At Chicago, at New England, at Philadelphia, he just failed, failed, failed. Thanksgiving Day against Buffalo, it was kind of hard to watch. It was. Okay, so that's all I got. And that's all he's proven is next to nothing. And he threw for a ton of yards, historically great pace last right. year. And they were very close to falling to 0-4 and then game five, right. you know what happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's, let's look at these remarks from Mike McCarthy. He says, but Cam, I I've had a chance to compete against Cam, chance to watch some of his tape in New England. And he said one nice thing. I still think he has a ton of football left, but we're very excited about the group we have. Right. You got a ton of football left, but just not with us. Time out. <laughs> okay, so you have competed against Cam. Right. Well, he has. He's faced him four times as the head coach of the Green Bay Packers. The first time he faced him was Cam's second NFL game. Do you remember what happened? Yeah, he threw for 432. 432 yards in that game. He did throw three picks in that game. They did lose 30-23 to 23 to Aaron and company. But even Aaron said in the locker room right after that game, I I'm impressed that kid's going to be really good. He right. raved about right. it. Right. 432 yards. And, again, I Cam set a bar for himself that he could never yeah. quite live up to because yeah. he went 400-plus in the first, first one at Arizona and then back home against Carolina. And then he's he, he's never been able to do that again. The closest he came was at Seattle yeah, last, last year, year, 397. Okay. But my point is Mike McCarthy witnessed 432. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty good. So their record against each other, Mike versus Cam, is 2-2 two and two because Cam did win the last two games. It was 2015 and 2017. And he threw for 297 in the first game. It was at home. And the, the, both of them were at home. And then he threw for 242 in the second game. But they won both of them. They were high scores, but close, you know, mm -hmm. close high scores. Right. It was 32 to 28 and 31 to 24. But he outdueled Aaron Rodgers in both games. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at this. He was in those two games. He was seven touchdowns to one interception. That, that pretty good, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 
And over the four games, he's nine touchdowns to five interceptions. Not it's pretty good. Yeah. So my point is, yeah, Mike has seen him up close and personal, and he's been really good against Mike McCarthy. Right. So I'm I'm a little offended that you'd say I've had a chance to compete against Cam, and I have a chance to, to, had a chance to watch some of his tape in New England because clearly they put him under a microscope mm-hmm. over that 24 hours right after he got cut. Right. Because Josina Anderson. Tweeted, right. they're they're gonna check him out. Do they're the gonna do the tires, okay. right? Do the due diligence. So my point is, he's saying we took a look, and we said no. Right. And my problem with this is, you're saying no with Cooper Rush, and I'm gonna reiterate the fact that Cooper Rush is homegrown, but they didn't even draft him. He went undrafted, and then they signed him right. out of Central Michigan. Right. And it was five years ago. Right. And only in his rookie year did he play in two games. And in the first game, it was a blowout at San Francisco, a 40-10 to 10 blowout. He completed one late garbage time pass for a grand total of two yards. Okay. In the second game he played was at the end of the year. It was the last game when they had fallen completely apart after Zeke got suspended. Mm-hmm. Remember 2017, mm-hmm. what a nightmare it got to be for Dak Prescott. Right. And that was it. That was the end of Cooper Rush's NFL production. He didn't complete a pass in the last game and mop up. Right. So he's completed one pass for two yards against the resume of Cam Newton that starts with a 2015 MVP and a Super Bowl appearance. Right. And again, I've said it all. He did not play well in the Super Bowl, thanks in large part to Von Miller and your Denver Broncos, right? Yeah, but I think the thing is, look, they, clearly, clearly, for whatever reasons, they seem beholden to Cooper Rush. Okay, Maybe he's, he, he's home. He's one of their own, and he's yeah. been in the organization for parts of five years. Right. They. To, to your point, they gave him $2.1 million two, two off-seasons ago. Right. And then Andy Dalton suddenly got cut and came available, and it's like, oh, oh, so you love Andy Dalton, but you don't love Cam Newton. Right. I, yeah. I, I don't know. And I think Cam Newton is better than Andy Dalton. I, I, I do, too. I personally think hey. Cam Newton is better than Tyrod Taylor, but that's hey, what we discussed I got it. another day. Agreed. So here's the point of this. I'm putting all my eggs in this season basket. I, I like their chances – to have a good year this right. year because I think the East is still weak enough that you can skate through it pretty pretty clearly and cleanly and and get a home playoff game. But do you believe Cooper Rush could win the okay, East? This is the problem because, <laughs> okay, we talked about the COVID issues right. yesterday. We got the Delta variant to deal right. with. And I told you I'd talk to one owner who said, you know, we, we are fearful right. that this year is going to be even harder versus COVID than right. last year because we don't have bubble no. Um, protocol in place, And right? you're going to have fans in the stands. And fans Everybody's going to be capacity. Okay, all right, fine. So this year, more than ever, your backups are going to have to rise and shine at moments. It right. might only be for a game. Right. But what have we seen about Dak Prescott? I love Dak Prescott. I'm going to knock on wood because I hate to even bring this up. I used to rave about his all-time great durability. Right. What a great ability is durability. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, game – Five last year happens, Giants at home. Right. And it's not just a compound fracture of the ankle. It requires two surgeries to fix. We saw in episode one of Hard Knocks, he's got a wishbone scar mm-hmm. on his ankle. Right. Seems to be okay. But but clearly, it wasn't so okay that in the first of camp that he was getting his lower body into his throws because he clearly was just throwing it with his arm. Right. And the more you do that for the first time in your life, the more you are at risk of pulling something upstairs. Mm-hmm. And he did. Right. And it's a completely unheard of quarterback injury. Right. But I think it is still plaguing him right. because I'm just doing eye tests. I don't think he's cutting loose with his throws, and maybe because he's a little fearful of right. cutting loose because what if it pulls again? Exactly. Right? And, right. and we're in countdown mm-hmm. to opening night. Six days now. Okay? And they don't deserve to be playing on opening night, but Tampa <laughs> does. And so they're getting fed to the Buccaneer Wolves uh-huh. on opening night yeah. when they were miserable last year. Right. So it's not like we have t- a clash of the Titans on opening night because it's it's only halfway there. Right. It's th- They're the Titans, yeah. right? Okay. Let's get I just think the thing is, look, clearly they have a clearly they came into the season knowing because Andy Dalton said he wanted to be a starter and he no longer wanted to be a backup. So he went for greener pastures. He found a place in Chicago that was going to allow him to start. Fine. I, I'm sure they didn't know they were going to be in position to be able to get a Justin Fields. They got Justin Fields. But I understand 
because it's like, well, Cooper Rush knows our system. But even if he, even if Cam doesn't know your system, I believe Cam coming in there is better than Cooper Rush, even though Cooper Rush knows the system. But that's not, Skip, the way you and I view Cam, clearly, up teams around the league don't view Cam like you and I view him. Remember, Skip, it was Maybe late. Maybe some do, some don't. Skip, it was late June. I got it. Late before okay. he got an opportunity. So what do you think is going to happen this year? It's going to take somebody getting hurt. And I hate to say I, I I don't want wish injury. But we know it's just it's just a, a, a it's part of the game. Somebody I, I, somebody's quarterback will get injured. Okay, Cam's strength has become his weakness. His strength is is his force of personality. Correct. And it can be a good thing and a yeah. bad thing. And you right. know it. Right. And I know it. He's and, not a bad kid. He doesn't get in any trouble. Okay. He he doesn't. But it just overwhelms an organization. Right. He's going to take it over. He even took over Bill Belichick's organization. Correct. And then he made a mistake on, you know, we can go back through. He didn't get vaccinated, right. and then he didn't understand the protocol rules, right. and that was the end of it. Did, was that the reason he got cut? Well, it was definitely a, a reason. reason. Correct. Okay. All right. So I get all that. I'm I'm just rooting for my team, and he feels like he'd be a great fit in Hollywood, Texas, for America's team. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Right. But I also like the fact that you want to talk about. A decorated veteran. He he is decorated. He has been there and he's been through all the battles you could be through. Right. Have been through to the point that if if I needed a backup, which I well might, to win three or four games, do you think Cooper Rush has a better chance or Cam Newton? Help me yeah. out. It's not even yeah, close. close. Right. Okay. That brings me to their other signing. They, they almost snubbed their nose at Cam by saying, you know, not only do we not want Cam. We actually want what the, the guy, the kid that, that Mike McCarthy said was the best one on the market right now, Will Greer. Well, I have mixed emotions. I told you before that right. draft, I love Will right. Greer. I was shocked he fell to the third round. Right. But I cannot defend what happened in 2019. He got two late season chances for a bad football team. Right. It was week 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. And ugh, the first game he played was at Indianapolis. He had a QBR of three on a yeah. scale of zero to a hundred. Mm. And he wound up in the two games. He got hurt in the second game. It was at home. Both of them were blowouts at Indy and New Orleans at home. New Orleans was 42 to 10. Right. He threw a pick six. He lost a fumble. He wound up throwing zero touchdowns to four interceptions. I can't defend it. Right. But I do love the potential of him. But are you telling me that Will Greer is better right now than Cam Newton? Seriously. Right. I'm, not, I'm, I'm asking because Cam's on a silver platter right now. Right. Because if you showed me you're willing to cut bait with Cooper Rush one time in favor of Andy Dalton, why wouldn't you do it this time? You have a chance to break through this year, at least win the East, and, and get you to a home playoff game. That's a big deal right now to me. But the thing is, what we know about Jerry, what you know about Jerry better than I do, is that when they draft a player, it's almost like they're drafting a family member. This they, is key. they don't like getting – if their players can – if they can play just a little, yeah. they're not letting them go. You, you know, it's funny about Jerry, to your point <laughs> – He's never been a big player in free agency when you'd think he would be number one. That yes. He'd be the Steinbrenner type, the right. Ted Turner. He would go splash into free agency. Right. But no, they're about the draft. Right. And they have drafted very well. Right. And yet, even though they draft pro bowlers, the pro bowlers don't equate to playoff wins. Correct. Right? Yes. So they've had lots of talent. Yes. That has not reached but fruition, little right? Little success with it in terms of in, playoffs. In terms of playoffs, so how, I can't defend that either. Right. So in the end, you, you have to maximize your your opportunity mm -hmm. here to win. What's still? I, I know what we're going to talk about Washington later. We're going to talk about Philadelphia later, right. for that matter. They all have talent, but they all have questions at quarterback. Correct. Okay, you shouldn't have a question at quarterback unless your quarterback is not healthy or not available. Skip, I can make a case, with the exception of the Giants, that if something were to happen to the starter, Washington and Philly's backup is better than what they have in Dallas. Well, I think it's <laughs> clear cut. I would take Joe Flacco over, over Cooper Rush. Okay. I would take... Well, well remember with, that they the, just... The guy that started in the playoff game, I forget his name, Washington. Mm -hmm. I would take Ta him Taylor over... Taylor Heineke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would take He's, him over Cooper Rush. He played really well yeah. against the Bucs. Yes. He played way better against the Bucs defense than I would think Cooper Rush could right now play against Absolutely. the Bucs defense, right? So, with that being said, if someone were to lose their quarterback in this division, 
who set up better for their backup to come in and stabilize the situation if they got to play for a month to a uh, uh, yeah for a month or uh, six games? Yeah, I well, it's it's obvious. So I'm talking about, do you have a plan B? Because I am not rushing to love Cooper Rush. I'm I'm just not in any rush. I can't. Well, I'm like sure he's a really good kid, and that's probably his biggest. Forte, right? Well, Skip, your plan B is Cooper Rush. Your plan yep. C is Real Greer. Yep. And D and E is the two guys you have on practice squad. Mm -hmm. Ben DiNucci and Garrett Gilbert. I think Gary Gilbert actually went to New England's practice squad. Oh, he did. That's he right. Did. That's right. Okay, but Ben DiNucci, B-A-D. Ben but Anthony DiNucci. First of all, right? we Bad. already know why Ben DiNucci is on the roster. He's a Pittsburgh guy. And, and McCarthy loves Love, thank him. Thank you. Because McCarthy sort of discovered him. Okay, great. Well, you, you, Let's you, have some more you need, cronyism. You need, to go put it, you need to go put it back where you got it from because it might be a curse. Yeah. So, so with that being said, Skip, I, I, I agree. But I just, Skip, I just don't think people view Cam like you and I and many others view Cam. It's like, well, he had an opportunity, Skip. Yeah, he had an opportunity last year, but that talent, that's why they went out and made all the upgrades. If they were so, if they were so straight with the talent, nobody had wholesale offseason changes yeah. like the New England Patriots. They did not. Which tells okay. me they knew they were deficient. Right. Even, even the owner said it. Okay, but I was afraid initially that Cam wouldn't want to be a backup, but then you told me that you heard from yes. inside yes, he, he was willing to that say. he's willing to yes. be yes. a backup. yes. Okay, so I'm not advocating for Cam to beat out Dak. Right. I'm only advocating for him to back up back Dak. Up and and if in you're case something happens to Dak, it's perfect. Yes, you got. Why, why wouldn't you do it? So I said it first. So don't come crying to me, Dallas <laughs> Cowboy fans. Don't come crying if Dak has maybe has a COVID issue, a protocol. I don't know, and right. he misses a game. Right. And Cooper Rush stinks it up. And Cooper Rush stunk it up against Jacksonville in the final preseason yes. game. What am I supposed to do with that? Let's Jerry just hope that Dak can throw. stay healthy he throughout the, the season, game and then we don't have to worry about <laughs> it. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed, or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.